Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. Black Market Organs Maria, a vibrant college student with a zest for adventure, found herself entangled in a web of deceit and darkness far from home. She had traveled solo to a picturesque coastal town in Eastern Europe, drawn by tales of its rustic charm and the serene beauty of its secluded beaches. Unbeknownst to her, the town harbored a sinister underbelly where desperate or greedy locals preyed on unwary tourists. One evening, while exploring the dimly lit streets of the old town, Maria befriended a charming local named Alexei, who promised to show her some less known spots that he claimed were the real treasures of the area. Charmed and slightly naive, Maria agreed, thrilled at the prospect of an authentic experience. As they wandered through a maze of narrow cobblestone alleys, Alexei's demeanor changed subtly, his friendly chatter giving way to a tense silence. Before Maria could process the shift, a sharp pain erupted at the base of her skull, and she crumbled to the ground, consciousness fading. When she awoke, Maria found herself in a stark, dimly lit room, her hands and feet bound and her mouth gagged. Panic set in as she took in her surroundings. The concrete walls, the barred windows high above, and the chilling sound of dripping water somewhere in the darkness. Fear turned to horror as she realized she wasn't alone. In the shadows, other figures lay motionless, some groaning softly, the air heavy with the scent of antiseptic and fear. Hours turned into days, or at least Maria thought so, as she drifted in and out of consciousness. Occasionally, people in surgical masks would enter, their eyes cold and calculating, and select one of the captives. Those taken never came back, and whispered conversations among the remaining prisoners spoke of a black market organ trade, kidneys, hearts, corneas harvested to order for wealthy buyers around the globe. Maria's desperation grew with each passing moment. She knew she had to escape before she too disappeared into the depths of this nightmarish enterprise. Her chance came when a new captive was brought in, causing a commotion and momentarily distracting their captors. Seizing the moment, Maria managed to wriggle her wrists free from the loosely tied bonds. Heart pounding, she crept towards the door where she had seen the guards enter and leave. Her body was weak, her movements sluggish, but adrenaline spurred her forward. As she reached the door, she realized it was unlocked, likely overlooked during the recent disturbance. Maria pushed the door open, wincing at the faint creak it made, a sound thunderous in the silence of her dread-filled environment. Peeking through the gap, she saw a dimly lit hallway, its walls lined with doors similar to hers. Her mind raced, understanding that any choice she made now could mean the difference between life and death. She stepped out, her bare feet cold against the concrete floor, and began to make her way towards what she hoped was the exit. The building was a labyrinth, a former hospital or clinic perhaps, its halls echoing with the faint, haunting echoes of its past or so it seemed to Maria's frightened mind. As she navigated the maze, the distant sound of the sea reached her ears, a cruel reminder of the freedom that lay just beyond her grim confines. But as she turned a corner, the soft, echoing footsteps behind her snapped her attention back to the present. Someone was following her, their presence a chilling whisper against the backdrop of her escape. Maria quickened her pace, her breath ragged, her mind racing with fear and determination. She knew she had to find a way out, to escape the dark trade she had almost become a part of. The corridor ahead forked, and she paused, her decision critical, her life hanging in the balance as the footsteps grew ever nearer. Heart pounding in her ears, Maria chose the left corridor, driven by an instinct she could hardly explain. The fluorescent lights flickered overhead, casting erratic shadows that danced along the dingy walls, heightening her terror. Each step felt laborious her legs heavy with exhaustion, yet she pushed on, desperate for a sign of escape. The faint sound of the ocean was now mixed with another noise, one that filled her with a new surge of dread, the low hum of machinery. It grew louder as she progressed, guiding her path as much as it fueled her anxiety. Maria's thoughts raced, piecing together a grim picture of her surroundings. She was likely in the underbelly of an abandoned wing of the hospital, possibly close to where the illicit surgeries took place. 
Suddenly, she stumbled upon a grim room, its door ajar. Inside, clinical lights illuminated stainless steel instruments and an operating table stained with telltale marks of recent use. The sight of bloodied gauze and discarded gloves made her stomach churn, the reality of her situation sinking in deeper. She had to keep moving. Getting caught now, after everything, wasn't an option. Pushing past the room, Maria continued, her steps quick and quiet, until she reached what looked like an old service elevator. It was a risky option, potentially noisy and conspicuous, but it also offered the quickest way out. She pressed the call button, holding her breath as the elevator clunked and groaned to life, praying it didn't draw her pursuers right to her. As she stepped into the elevator, the door sluggishly began to close. Just then, she heard a shout, a voice echoing through the hallways, chillingly close. Someone had discovered her escape. The door seemed to crawl at a snail's pace as the shouts grew louder, footsteps now running towards her. With a desperate, silent plea, she pressed the close button repeatedly, her other hand clutching the knife she had grabbed from the surgery room for protection. Finally, the door sealed shut and the elevator began its descent. Maria leaned against the wall, her relief palpable but short-lived. As the elevator descended, the old mechanisms emitted a loud, grinding noise, not the stealthy escape she had hoped for. Her relief turned to panic as the elevator shuddered to a stop between floors. The lights flickered, then went out, plunging her into darkness. Her heart raced as she realized she was trapped, the elevator becoming a temporary cage. From the darkness above, she heard voices. Her captors had reached the elevator shaft and were peering down into the abyss, their flashlight beams just missing her. Maria crouched in the shadows of the elevator, her breath shallow, trying to make as little noise as possible. The voices grew louder, more agitated. Then suddenly, a light descended into the shaft, coming closer. She gripped her knife tighter, preparing for what might come next. As the light approached, a new terror gripped her. The possibility of what awaited her above or below was unknown, and every second in the elevator increased the risk of discovery. In this terrifying game of cat and mouse, Maria knew she had to make a move. With the shaft above and an uncertain path below, her choices were dwindling, and the stakes were life or death. The impending encounter in the confined space of the elevator loomed, promising a confrontation she could no longer avoid. Maria's heart hammered in her chest as the light continued to creep closer, the voices above growing more discernible. Amongst the clamor, she heard the clinking of tools, a grim reminder of the fate she was avoiding. With no other options, she pried open the elevator's emergency hatch and clambered onto the roof of the car, enveloping herself in the oppressive darkness of the elevator shaft. As she steadied herself, the voices halted. They had noticed the elevator's stop position. Sweat beaded on Maria's forehead as she listened to the muffled sounds of her pursuers attempting to access the shaft. The light swung wildly now, illuminating fragments of the darkened tunnel around her. She held her breath, trying to become as small and silent as possible. Suddenly, a loud bang echoed through the shaft as someone managed to open a service door above. A flashlight beam darted across the elevator roof, narrowly missing her hiding spot. In a desperate act of survival, Maria used the knife to sever the cables that ran alongside the elevator car. Sparks flew as metal clashed against metal, and the elevator shuddered violently under her. The voices screamed in alarm as the elevator, now unleashed, began its free fall. Maria clung to the top of the car as it plummeted downward, the wind screaming past her. Time seemed to slow as she braced for impact, the ground rushing up to meet her. The elevator crashed into the basement with a deafening roar, the impact throwing Maria from the roof. She hit the ground hard, pain radiating through her body. Dazed and injured, she crawled from the wreckage, the basement dimly lit by emergency lights. As she staggered to her feet, her ears still ringing from the crash, Maria realized she wasn't alone. A figure emerged from the shadows of the basement, a man with a surgeon's mask, his eyes cold and calculating. He approached slowly, a syringe in his hand. You've caused quite a bit of trouble, he said, his voice chillingly calm. But no matter, we have ways of keeping our guests compliant. Frozen with fear, Maria could only watch as he advanced. In a last, defiant act, she lunged forward with her knife, but pain exploded in her neck before she could strike. The world began to blur as the chemicals in the syringe coursed through her veins, dragging her down into darkness. 
As she succumbed to unconsciousness, the last thing Maria saw was the man's emotionless mask as he leaned over her, whispering, Welcome to the harvest. The basement of horrors, once a myth circulated among the adventurous and the curious, had claimed another victim, its secrets preserved deep within its chilling embrace, its whispers echoing endlessly in the forgotten depths of the old hospital. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video 